Welcome to the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. We really appreciate you listening. We'll be talking about everyday mom life with some pixie dust from Disney thrown in from time to time. This is a judgment-free zone. We know everyone parents differently, and we're just two moms doing our best as we figure out this whole parenting thing. So now, let's get this party started with today's episode. is that I need it to survive. Yeah. But then I pass like a certain threshold where I go into the anxiety zone mm. where I need it and I'm awake, but then I start getting like the heart palpitations and like I can't take a full breath. So then I kind of borderline on a panic attack because I can't take a full breath. So I think there's something wrong. Right. Yeah. It's uh that's not a great cycle. No. I and it's think. not, I don't drink a lot of coffee. Like, mm-hmm. I probably have one cup a day, maybe two if it's like a long day and I'm extra tired. Right. But that's what will happen. Like if I have too much coffee, I'll start getting anxiety, but I need coffee to stay awake. And it is this vicious cycle. And I feel like I'm not the only one this happens to. So I'm bringing awareness to this cycle (laughs) that I'm in and I cannot get out of. Right. I used to be pretty much strictly a tea drinker. Once, like, especially working in an office, like, I rarely drank coffee. Once in a while, I'd have it, like, change it up because I always felt like coffee didn't do anything for me. I'm like, I'm not going to just drink it just to drink it. So I need it. Mm-hmm. And then every once in a while, I'll be like, let me try it again. Maybe it'll help. No, it didn't. But since the second child was born three years ago, I think every single day, I started <laughs> drinking coffee on the regular. And now I'll have multiple cups a day, but I still don't know that it really wakes me up, but I do sometimes get the jitters. If I'm like, Oh, I've had like two cups. I'm still tired, but I'm a little shaky. So maybe I scale back on that. You're like, maybe we just scale back to like three, three cups a day. Yeah. No, I I do understand. I feel like I'm not alone in this, but it is a thing. And I really, I have actually had a panic attack because like, I feel like, you know, I have too much coffee. I cannot catch my breath. So then I think I'm dying. I think there's something wrong. And then, you know, this sounds actually, this sounds like a medical thing that I should have checked out. (laughs) Like this is, this is, there's probably something not right. Eventually I do take a deep breath right? and I'm fine, but I think, oh my gosh, I can't take a deep breath. There's something wrong, you know, but this is just a little too dramatic to start out a podcast episode. (laughs) So maybe we should just jump right into it. Yeah. People can relate, you know. I, well, that's the hope. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, everyone, welcome to Magical Mommy Mondays. I am Angela. I am Jen. Welcome to episode two. I know as we speak. Yeah. The first episode is dropping today. Yeah, this is crazy. I know. I know. It is real now. Yeah. And so as I was listening to it while editing, I was like, wow, we were super excited. And I'm still super excited, but like right, you right. could just hear like the, there was the, a buzz. Oh yeah. There, it was just us being giddy. Like, oh, we have a podcast. This is amazing. And it is. And I'm so excited, but I love that you can like hear that level in episode one. I'm not saying you're not going to hear it again, but I love that that's what we brought to episode one. Like we are in this, we're doing it. It's happening. Yeah. That was yeah. like, that was like, the schoolgirl excitement. Like that was our crush episode. Exactly. I legit texted Frank and said, oh my God, in this episode, we sound like a bunch of schoolgirls. Like, (laughs) I think that was the exact text I sent. Just watch. No one comes back for episode two. (laughs) Yeah. Are you guys here? Or when we get the feedback, we may never release this episode. Who knows? And we got two downloads for episode two. (laughs) Like, oh, well, it was fun. Yeah. Fun while it lasted. Yeah. Anyway, to all two listeners, <laughs> welcome to episode two. Yeah. We hope that you loved episode one. Feel free to leave any feedback on our social media. We will list those in the show notes. And like I mentioned on my YouTube channel, because I posted the first episode there as well as everywhere else that it's played. Um, while this show is a passion project for us, we do want to create something that you will love as well, which is why we'd love your feedback. Yes, yeah. I agree. 
Okay. Okay. (laughs) So we do have a topic in mind today. Yeah, we do. We do have a topic in mind. I'm excited about. But you are how many episodes or posts or what are we calling the videos on your YouTube page? Videos. Videos, just videos. We're just calling them videos. Okay. So how many are we up to at this point? So I have put, I put, I put out two videos onto the YouTube channel and, um, I have listed my channel as lifestyle parenting and Disney okay. because I, I just want to be able to kind of do the videos that I want to do without feeling like I'm limiting myself. Yeah. I just watch. I end up only doing Disney videos. <laughs> I don't want to put myself in a box. <laughs> only Disney. Um, but I actually just uh, put my logo on the second video, which I was very excited about. Um, I got my logo from Nick Logos on Etsy, and awesome. they did a phenomenal job. They created three for me right off the bat, and then I kind of got to edit them how I wanted to. This is just an amazing experience. Um, but I have a logo now, and then the third episode video is going to drop this week. I do put out videos every Thursday. And I got to tell you, it's just such, I don't know, it's kind of a a scary experience having a YouTube channel, but it's a really exciting experience because I'm someone who thinks five years ahead. I'm always a planner. Mm -hmm. And just from talking to different people, they're like, you have to stop doing that. It, It gets rid of your excitement. You can't enjoy the moment. You just have to focus on the next two videos. Instead of thinking five years ahead, just focus on the next two videos, enjoy the moment, enjoy the process. So that's what I'm really trying to do. I'm trying to think differently with this channel, but it it is just like a wild ride and a very, it can be scary, but it's also really exciting. And I'm really enjoying the feedback and the response from everyone. And everyone's been so supportive. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's been wonderful. But if you are interested in my YouTube channel, it is just Angela Dahlgren on YouTube. Um, my first video was me booking my flight and my rooms for Walt Disney World. And I told you exactly how much I spent, which I mentioned in the first podcast episode. And then this video was me booking my dining reservations. Yes. And planning is pretty key at this point if you're going to Disney. And I think it's funny, I, I will get asked from friends sometimes like, who may not have been there in a few years or maybe not since they were kids. Like, all right, seriously, tell me like, do I really need to plan that much? And I'm like, well, if you want to risk maybe not getting on certain rides Mm -hmm. or just sticking to quick service and having burgers and chicken fingers the entire trip, which maybe you want, then no, you don't need to plan that much. But otherwise at this point, yeah, you, you got to lock down some reservations. You need to get those fast passes because they, they're they gone so quick. And sometimes you can't, things open up as you're there and reservations for dining re- um, open up. But just to be on the safe side, at least some planning needs to be involved. And we should mention that this is for Walt Disney World. Yes. I do hear that Disneyland is a completely different experience. I hope to go this year, but it'll probably be next year. So I will get back to you when I find <laughs> out. But the people that I have talked to who have done zero planning for Walt Disney World, those are the people who have a terrible time. And it is really unfortunate that you have to put in as much work into planning before you go. But I promise you, the more planning that you do before you go, the more stress-free of a trip you're going to have. Yes. So in the next few days, I'm going to be organizing my fast passes. And then I will finally feel like everything is in order for the trip, yeah. which is pretty much how I live my life anyway. <laughs> I feel like when all the chaos in my life is organized and I have a plan, yes, breathe a little easier and life, life is good for the moment. Yes. Do you have a planner or a, or a calendar set up? What, what is your go-to to really like, okay, this week is going to be crazy. Let me organize myself. Uh, for my, okay. For Disney, I like to do an Excel sheet. Okay. Um, for my life, I have like a planner, like a tangible plan, tangible planner that I open up mm-hmm. for myself. We have like a big family calendar on the inside of our pantry. Okay. And then my husband and I just have the Apple calendar on our phones. Okay. And then that's where everything goes. 
Right. And he, the, I'm, I'm really lucky in that the two of us are really good about putting things in there. Yeah. So we know exactly what's going to happen on which day and we're a really good team that way. And then from there, I take everything on that calendar and then I put it on the big one um, in the kitchen, in the right. pantry. So when people are, when we're like, oh, when is that thing? We can just open the door and be like, oh, it's on that day. And then, yes. yeah. Yeah. What I have, you? I also have a big chalkboard calendar in the kitchen as well. And really that's only as of this year. And I don't know if it's because my son went to kindergarten and it just felt like life got a little crazier. So mm -hmm. like, it just seemed like between his special days at school, whether it was wacky hair day or pajama day or whatever else, just mm -hmm. keeping track of those days and then keeping track of when he needed money for certain things by certain days. And then just our life, who are we seeing on what day and what weekend? And, Oh, we have these plans. Oh, this weekend's completely booked mm -hmm. just so that, and it's, pretty much out in the open in the kitchen. So all of us can see it. My five-year-old's got totally into it. If we don't move the magnet to the proper day, he tells us. And it's just a good way to keep track of our life at this point. And then I do like a tangible planner as, uh, as well, because I just, I just mm -hmm. like to write, I just like to write in it. It helps me just mm -hmm. <laughs> focus myself. Um, my husband is definitely more of a digital Apple calendars guy. So I'll try to make sure he has the right things in there as well. And all matches up somehow, but, but you know, it, it doesn't matter how organized you are. Somehow the house just gets messy when you have oh, kids yes. or even when you don't mm -hmm. sometimes when your life is that organized and you're in that much of a routine, you're busy having a life yep. and the house gets chaotic yes. and messy and nothing gets your house cleaner faster than when you are having company. No. And that is the topic today. Yes. And this topic happened because it was happening to me, I think, a week or two ago. And I was texting with Angela. And I was like, we're going to do the, the finals tomorrow. And I haven't studied. So I need to study all night type of clean for the house. And she's like, oh, my God, we need to talk about that because that yes. is such a thing. And it's it, it's like I need to have company in my house at least once a week to really keep up with it. Because if I go a week or two with no company, oh, it's showing. And then oh, yeah. throw in like, if kids are sick or if we just weren't home that much and we're just throwing things wherever in between coming and going, it's madness. No, it is survival of the fittest, especially yes. when your kids are sick and your kids were sick. Oh God. So that much. week <laughs> or the week after. I yes. couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. But yes, our, our house since um, I've been home more and working a little less, and especially, I don't know if I covered this last episode, but towards the end of the year, I was really, really sick, pretty mm -hmm. much October through December, and it ended with me having surgery. So our house became insanely messy, insanely mm -hmm. messy, just could not keep up with it. Yeah. But whenever, you know, you have company, something in you clicks and you're like, all right, we got to rally. <laughs> we got to cram for these finals before everyone sees how we really live. We yes, have to exactly. make it look like we don't live here. Yes. Exactly. I'm like, oh my God, if anyone like drop by right now, I would be mortified. Like this house is insane. Like it's horrible. And then, and then sometimes if it gets in too much of a rut, the kids get so excited when a room is clean, like, whoa, look how clean it is. I'm like, oh my God, we're horrible parents. <laughs> <laughs> but they also go with the flow. They're like, man, exactly. okay. So I know I now keep my Barbies underneath the pillow and <laughs> yeah. by the couch. Exactly. Yes. Sometimes I'll take like a broom to under the couch and just sweep out everything that's been lost under there. And they're like, oh, look what I found. I'm like, amazing, right? So, so this, might, this might have been a low point, but last week we, um, I told my kids I would give them a quarter if they put their teeny little digits into all of the couch cushions and looked for any toys before mm. we vacuumed in all of the little nooks and crannies. Nice. And you know what? They really earned that quarter <laughs> because little girls have these tiny little princesses. They're not magic clips, if you know what magic clips are, but they're little things and mm -hmm. the little Barbies have holes in their dresses and you stick things in the little holes. And my daughter has about infinity of them. Like the yeah. limit does not exist. And uh, we must've found like 15 of those in the couch cushions. Yeah. Was, anyway, so 
It's crazy. Speed cleaning for company. (laughs) We're going to go through a couple questions. How long does it take you? Who will you not clean for? Who will you clean for? And then our process. If this seems like a boring subject, we're going to try to spice it up for you. But you know what? We all do it. I cannot think of a single person who does not do this. So first of all, Jen, you're cleaning for company. Maybe the in-laws are coming over. Mm -hmm. Maybe Uncle Henry and Aunt Sally. Right. What needs to get done the 30 minutes before they're coming? Absolutely needs to get done. So our house is a split level or high ranch, however you want to call it. So you walk into basically two staircases of up and down and up is the bedrooms, the dining room, the kitchen, and the living room. So it's pretty much everything Everything. upstairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, which makes it a little tough, but our room always ground zero. When in doubt, you just toss stuff in our room. Shove it in there. Yep. Just shove it in there. Close the door. No one needs to go in our room. There's Mm -hmm. no reason to be in our room. Sometimes the kids were like, oh, I think I left. I'm like, nope, we're not going in mommy and daddy's room at Mm -mm. this time. No. So everything gets shoved in there. The bigger, deeper cleans, kitchen, bathroom, living room. Make Mm -hmm. sure there's like nothing on the dining room table. Wipe down the little buffet or whatever. But the like deeper cleans, I feel like kitchen and bathroom for sure. Yep. Um, and then the kids room, as long as it's pretty straightened up. I mean, if they made like a total mess of it, I'm not too crazy about it. Cause I'm like, whatever, it's a kid's room. Like, right. Kids are messy. Perfect. Whatever. Like they're going to mess it up in five minutes after the company's here anyway. So I'm going to leave it. But, um, yeah. So it's tough because I feel like with our house, you just see everything. So I'm always like, oh God, well, this whole main area needs to do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I mean, during the summer, because if you come downstairs, we have the playroom and we have the office that I'm sitting in right now and a bathroom, but if you, it's also the door to outside, out back. So when it's summertime, we got to make sure this whole area is clean because people are coming and going for barbecues or to use the downstairs bathroom or there's so it's sometimes it's a lot depending on the time of year and and how messy the house is right before people are coming so I do I love the notice and the heads up it helps a lot even if it's a day (laughs) no we are we have an open concept on on our main floor Mm -hmm. so it's kitchen family room front room bathroom yeah first and foremost you at your bottom, we cover that bathroom because my son is a four-year-old who uses the potty yes. and there is pee on everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Pee on the floor, pee on the toilet, ever, everywhere. So like yep. we pretty much go fumigate the place yeah. and clean that. Also kids like just leave food all over the sink mm-hmm. and mirror oh, yeah. somehow, even though they can't reach the mirror. Yeah. So that gets done with a whole container of Clorox wipes. Yeah. And then we tackle the dishes because my husband and I, we're just like, everyone has that chore that they do not like doing. We both happen to not like doing dishes. Yep. We're the same way. Yep. Yep. That's the one we both share. So it's, it's that main floor kitchen. And then when in doubt, light a candle. Oh yeah. Light a candle sure, and let it go while you're doing all of the other cleaning. I mean, obviously stay on the same floor, but that's what we do because when people walk in, they're going to be like, Oh, your house smells so good. And then they (laughs) won't notice that the wood floor has like 55 applesauce stains for my son walking around with an applesauce pouch. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, that's like, I also have stickers all over my wood floor. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to, there are times where I just go through and just spray them and like peel them all off the floor. And I'm like, but it gets to a point sometimes where it just looks like there's dirt on the floor. If you're just looking and you look closer and it's like Mickey, yeah, Pop Troll, whoever else, you know. <laughs> you're like, that was a decorating choice. Right. I, say? Um, I do have a question for you in terms of laundry. Are okay. you guys good about laundry? Like, do you do the laundry and put it away? I don't mind doing laundry mm-hmm. because I hate doing dishes. Okay. I think, I feel like for most people, it's one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind doing laundry. Okay. So you're like, it comes out of the dryer. It's put away. I mean, it depends. Like I'll fold it right away. Right. Okay. I might not put it away till the next day. Okay. But it will get put away and I don't mind it. Right. You You are better than me. (laughs) But like the dishes will sit there 
Yeah. For at least a day. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't mind doing the laundry, but I feel like there, and, and there are times I'm good about it where I'm like, whoo, we're getting everything put away. This is nice. Every, all the clothes are organized. This is looking nice. And then there are times where all of a sudden it's been too long. And now there's just like a pile of clean clothes that we're like digging through. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's on the dining room table and sometimes it's in the playroom on the cushions, wherever it is. And I find these memes on Facebook that because we feel like, oh my God, can we just be adults and put our laundry away? Like what is wrong with us? But then I find the memes on Facebook that literally list out like, uh, I'm in that routine where you take the clean clothes, you put them on the dining room and then you pull from them and then you take the dirty clothes, you wash them again and you just put them back on the dining room table. I'm like, look, we're not alone. There's more people like us. It makes me so happy. Uh, it's like that might as well be our dresser at this point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> my version of a dining room table is our coffee counter. Okay. Our coffee counter is the catch all for all of our crap. Mm-hmm. Everything. School papers, coffee, obviously, yeah. um, mail, any loose article of anything. Yes. Paper. Anything that like we just don't know where to put it, it goes on the coffee counter, mm-hmm. which is on the main floor, which yeah. is one of the first things company sees. <laughs> yes. And it's the first thing to get all disheveled and messy looking. And it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter if I go through it every week. The next day, it will get messy again. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then I just take the pile of papers that have accumulated on my version, which is the dining room table, and I take them, and then I'm like, uh-oh, someone's coming. I'll just leave these on my bed because I don't even know what's in there, and I might need one of those forms for something. So let me leave it in there, and I'll figure that out later. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or, or you just move it to the office. Yes. Mm-hmm. It just keeps going around like, ah. Uh, well, now this is clean. So we have to move this over here and we just yeah. keep moving things around. It's crazy. Okay. So we've, we've tackled what we need to clean. Yes. How long does your speed cleaning take you? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really depends okay. on how bad it is. So on a week where we're coming off like a week of someone was sick, it's oh, going to yeah. take longer. Yeah, yeah. One, because I also want to make sure things are really clean because although I was Lysoling and wiping things down and mm-hmm. trying my best that way, the clutter has really built, the dishes have really built. So there's a lot more to do on the weeks where the routine is off overall. But otherwise, we can normally, you know, if it's the next day, we try, once the kids are asleep, we try to just knock it out once they're asleep. Um, sometimes there's a little leftover for the morning or we save the vacuuming for the morning, but you know, we, we can typically do it pretty efficiently if it's a normal week. What about you? This kind of leads to my next question. Is this a solo job or does your significant other help? Oh no, he helps. Okay. Yeah. There are times where if it is an off week that I'll try to like get things started if he's Mm -hmm. working during the day or whatever, if it's a weekend, that's fantastic. And we can kind of divide and conquer. Maybe one's keeping the kids occupied and trying to clean up with them occupied in the same room as them. And the other one's focusing somewhere else, but we, we do have a pretty good system with it. Um, but yeah, if he's working, I'll try to get like a head start on something. Okay. Yeah, we are for you. It depends. Like, Mm -hmm. um, so my husband works weekends. Okay. So like if my parents are coming and they're like, oh, we're going to come up and I have like, say like a half hour, they're a half hour away. I can, I can knock it out by myself in a half hour. Yeah. And I just like, don't stop moving. And I'm like, all right, kids, we're turning on Mickey Mouse shorts. Here you go. And then I can, I can knock it out. But, um, if it's for a party, like a birthday party we're hosting, we are really good about dividing and conquering. Yeah. And um, it works pretty well that way. Yeah, it's it's much more efficient that way. And I know that it's good for kids to be responsible and to have chores and jobs. And my kids do have chores and jobs. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to speed cleaning, yeah, it's more work for me to tell them five times to put <laughs> their toys away. Yes. And then to stop them from fighting with each other when someone's putting someone's animals away when they should be putting away their Barbies. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you only have 30 minutes, it's easier just to be like, okay, well, you guys go do this. And mommy is going to run around like a wild like a crazy person. Cas- 
Tasmanian devil and get all this stuff done. Yes, I agree with that. It's it's so much easier to be like, and and sometimes they'll say, oh, can we help? And I'm like, oh, thank you so much. That's so nice of you. You guys just sit here, have a snack. You guys want a snack? We will have a snack and sit here. Sometimes they want to like wipe things down. So like in the midst of me running around, I'll spray down at like the TV unit and their little table and whatever. I'm like, here you go. Just wipe everything down, guys. Go down. <laughs> Do that. Yeah. But otherwise it's best to just sort of just stay over here. I swear we'll be paying attention to you again soon. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy loves you, but I can't yeah. talk right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, what are your best organizing cleanup tips for a quick cleanup? <sighs> I mean, I I do feel like I I try to get the toys and stuff in their right spots. But if it's a true speed clean, where is there space to just stick it? <laughs> is yeah. there, are there the drawers that are in the bookshelf? Let's just throw all the little toys in there. We'll figure that out later or under the Ottomans or wherever else. But so if it's a speed clean, I'm just, I'm putting the toys wherever I have space for them now that's out of the way, out of sight. No one needs to see and I'll organize them another day. But yeah. I think that's, that's the biggest one. And then you know, I feel like as long as things are wiped down and it doesn't look like dusty or <laughs> gross in any way, I think that always helps. No, I got right you. My my two tips is one I've already told you, which is the light a candle yes. approach, because mm-hmm. then it smells like your house is always that clean. Mm-hmm. And and you, if you get like the ones that have the lemon smell, it mm-hmm. smells like you've just cleaned your counters and your floors. Yes, with like a lemon cleaner when you're like. Pfft, Jokes on you. <laughs> Got this at Bath and Body Works. <laughs> Lemon verbena. Exactly. And then my newest purchase I've had for probably three weeks to a month is this Black & Decker handheld vacuum. And it doesn't have a cord. It's it's a, on a charger. Mm-hmm. And it's a handheld vacuum. And it just cleans up everything. It's mm-hmm. like my broom replacement. Nice. My kids love these breakfast bars. But they it's like crumb mania and I <laughs> yeah. dread every time they're like mommy can I have a bee bar I'm like oh my gosh here we go mm-hmm. but ever since I got this vacuum I'm just like yeah go ahead and I grab it I'm like I'm ready for you <laughs> and that is my biggest tool when it comes to speed cleaning because I know I can just get that off of its little dock and mm-hmm. just clean up all the crumbs and as I'm they're falling from the mouth just yeah, I just like there. hold it under their chin. I'm like, okay, go, I'm ready. I'll catch it. I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll even do it to the table too. And then afterwards, spray down the table and then mm-hmm. or use a sponge or whatever. Yeah. So like, those are my two biggest speed cleanup things is to use a candle and then my handheld vacuum. Yes. And I do see a big debate sometimes because there are some people who are like, I enjoy time with my kids and I play with them and they're happy and I don't care about the house. It can wait. And then the people on the other side are like, why does it mean I'm not enjoying my kids and not playing with them if my house is clean? And I think there's a happy medium. I think, you know, much like everything when it comes to parenting, right. the extremes are always there, but there's a happy middle ground for everything. And if you try to keep up, that's great. And some days it's not going to happen. And some weeks it's not going to happen, but you do your best you can and try to keep up with everything. And it's hard, especially for us, our kids are still little Mm -hmm. and they can wreck a room in seconds. It's it's nuts. I'm like, I literally, everything looks so, sometimes if I will lock myself in their room and be like, you're not allowed in here. I need to like really get this Mm -hmm. place back together. And they will come in. I'm like, you're not allowed to touch anything. At least until tomorrow. <laughs> Just give it till tomorrow. You oh can my look. gosh. <laughs> That's it. Yes. I'm so glad you said that. Like <laughs> I will wash our wood floors, which is mm-hmm. something that like I have to, that and cleaning the bathrooms, I have to psych myself up to do anyway, yeah. because it's like, oh, I haven't done this in a month. Mm-hmm. It really needs to be done. And as soon as I'll finish washing the floors, my son will say, mommy, I play with Play-Doh. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, no, no, you can't. Because he'll take the Play-Doh. And instead of playing with Play-Doh, 
they'll just mush it into little crumb sized <laughs> pieces, which then smash into the wood floor. And sometimes I just need the wood floor to be clean for 10 minutes. Exactly. I wash them. Right. It's, it's a lot of wood floor and I just need the gratification of a job well done. Yes. I'm like, no, no, you can play with it in like 30 minutes, but I yeah. just need to stare at the wood floors for, for like 10 seconds of cleanness. Exactly. Go take out Legos. Yeah, you can literally <laughs> play with any other toy, but for some reason, it's at that moment, of course, Play-Doh or paint. Oh, this I looks do so paint. nice. We can we can do something here. We can yeah. decorate this a little better. Yeah, it's it's always the messy toy right after you've cleaned something. Yes, yeah. always <laughs> funny. But as far as you know, the the giving your kids like cleaning or playing with your kids. I also think that like adults, kids need downtime. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't always be stimulated. Yes. They need their downtime too. So whether you're cleaning when they're watching a show or you're cleaning when they're playing together or playing by themselves, because it's mm -hmm. also good for kids to play by themselves. There are ways to fit that in. Yes. Or you know, cleaning after you go to bed. But I also think for the record, parents, you shouldn't always be cleaning when you do have alone time. You need oh, to no. have time for yourself. Yes. Whether it's playing homescapes like I do, <laughs> <laughs> or a bath or doing whatever, you need time for yourself that doesn't involve cleaning or moving around. You need downtime too, just like yes. you do. And that's and that gets us sometimes. There are definitely nights where we're like, oh, we should really just like knock out the dishes and like do a mm -hmm. reset to the living room. Like mm -hmm. it's it's gonna get to that point. And then we're like, but I don't want to. Like I just want to like chill out and watch a show and like go to bed early. That's all I want to do tonight. Like and and then everything, you know, piles up real quick, <laughs> but whatever. Like I just binged three seasons of a show in two weeks. I insanity. So clearly my house might be suffering a little bit because of that, but who cares? <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> what you needed. And what exactly. It, what's funny is like my husband and I, our self, our self care time never lines up. Yeah. So like Saturday mornings, he doesn't go to work till later. So while I'm like relaxing with the kids and we're watching yeah. Saturday morning cartoons, he's like, all right, we need to get up. We need to clean the house. We need to do this. I'm like, no, 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 no. This yeah. is my time right now. Yeah. <laughs> we have all these things to do. I'm like, okay, well then you go do them. I'm yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is not for me right now. Yeah. No. But no, like you, your body was telling you to grind out three seasons of right? Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. That's right. Exactly. You had and to I do that. Exactly. You and I enjoyed it. But yeah, and you do, you need the downtime. There is, you are doing and going constantly as parents and you need the downtime. And, and if you have a significant other, you need the downtime with them too, because otherwise you're just sort of passing each other in the scheduling of who is going where on what day. Maybe you can take this one here. Maybe I could stay home and clean the house while you take them out or whatever it is. Oh. There's constantly you're kind of ships passing in the night some weeks. So it's good to have the downtime whenever you can get it. Yeah. And that can definitely happen with my husband and I, with him having such a weird schedule yeah. with his job. And maybe that's something we'll talk about in an upcoming podcast episode Never for all know. two of you. Listening. <laughs> <laughs> but with that in mind, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to give us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. If you'd like, yes. you know, you can find us on Twitter at Magic Mom Monday or Instagram on Magical Mommy Mondays. And there you can leave us some feedback on what you thought of this episode and how we can improve or what, what topics you'd like to hear for future episodes. Or what kind of speed cleaning you do. Yes, I want to hear <laughs> all about your organizational tips and your cleaning tips and how long it takes you to speed clean and all the questions that we covered, I would like you to answer. Yes, send us your Pinterest boards of all your organizing tips. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> Jen and I will put our own social media handles in the show notes. So if mm -hmm. you want to follow us on our personal social media, um, you can do that. We'll put those in the show notes, like I said. Yes, sounds good. And uh, I guess we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Deuces. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. You can find us on Twitter at Magic Mom Monday and on Instagram at Magical Mommy Mondays. The music you heard on this podcast was written and produced by Matt Harvey. We'll see you next time.